Well, after that situation, you were expelled from two different boarding schools for using drugs. Did the drug use start after your dad died? One of them was for a lady friend that I had. Okay. <laughs> so and I'm okay. not saying I wasn't doing drugs at the time, but okay. it was, uh, you know, yeah, I started doing drugs after my dad died. Okay, to try to cope with the loss? Oh, I, who knows? I mean, yeah. I feel honestly that I was, that I was born an addict and that, you know, I would have, no matter what happened, I probably would have uh, gone that way. But who knows? You know, you can't, there's no way to reconstruct that. But I feel, feel like a lot of the things that I had ADHD when I was a kid and that I was, I had a big empty hole inside of myself. And that, you know, I couldn't focus, I couldn't concentrate in the middle. Of, and the minute I started taking drugs, I became calm and I was able to focus and I actually started doing really well in school. Oh, I think I was medicating various issues that I had. And, um, you know, and if the medication still worked, I'd still be doing it. But, you know, after, you know, you do it for a while, um, you know, particularly I was using heroin, um, it turns on you. And, you know, it works for a while. It, does, it solves all your problems for a little while. Right. And then, you know, it's like dancing with a gorilla. You figure out that you're not stopping the thing until the gorilla gets tired of it. I've never heard that before. That's a, that's a good comparison. <laughs> then next year, your grandfather dies. Yeah, my grandfather had a stroke in 62. Uh, oh, okay. So. so he was disabled after that and, and, uh, and really never talked again. He never had a normal conversation. He could only grunt. Okay, so it took, you know, you had already prepared yourself for that over the course of seven years. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, after getting kicked out of a couple of schools, you end up getting into Harvard. Yeah. Most people who get expelled from schools don't get into Harvard. Can you explain how you uh, accomplished that? I was a top student in my class for the last uh, two years of, of school. And... Um, you know, I had a good academic record. That's one reason I'm sure that, you know, Harvard looked at the fact that my dad had been a presidential candidate, that, you know, I had generations of Kennedys. My aunt, my grandfather had been to Harvard. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, my father had been to Harvard. My uncle had been to Harvard. And... Um, and so, and you know, they they, they favor le legacies, but yeah. I, you know, so I, I would say there are a lot of factors and, you know, and that was, and it was a lot easier to get to Harvard back then than it is right now. Yeah. Okay. So you go to Harvard, you graduate with a bachelor's in American history and literature. Then you go to London School of Economics and then you go to Virginia Law School where you get your uh, law degree and then a master's of law from Pace University. So you really take the whole school thing very seriously moving forward. At one point, didn't you have problems uh, passing the bar? Yeah, I, uh, I failed the bar by one point. Okay. I got 659 out of 660, but they didn't say that in the newspaper articles. They just said, idiot, <laughs> flunks bar. <laughs> it's... Uh, it's it's uh, uh, anyway. That's one of the the downsides of celebrity. Okay. I, I, and by the way, mm -hmm. I was a heroin addict at that point. Well, right, because in 1983, when you were 29 years old, you were charged with heroin possession. Yeah. Was that a turning point? Because now it's out in the public. And yeah, you're that's Kennedy right. And that, yeah, I mean, one of the things, uh, the, one of the problems I had, Vlad, was. You know, there was, because of the, you know, the, uh, the, the strictures that I'd grown up in, that, you know, anytime anything bad, you tell anything bad, it's going to, you tell anybody any secrets about yourself, it's going to get in the press. So me, the idea of going into a 12-step meeting and start telling, being truthful to people was, I, 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 I'd just as soon go, you know, swim to the bottom of the ocean and, you know, try to breathe. I, I just right. wouldn't do it. So, um, but all of a sudden, everybody knew I was a drug addict. And it gave me the freedom to actually get help. And, you know, I immediately, 
uh, I'd say I immediately had a, a spiritual realignment because I was able to go in and be honest for the first time in my life. And it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't just not having to do drugs, but it was not having to lie anymore and to hide things that I could just be, you know, who I was and be honest. Well, right. You got two years probation and community service and you went into a drug treatment center, like you mentioned. Was that the point that you kicked drugs? Yeah. A lot of people try to kick them, you know, and then they come back, they, you know, they come back to it, situations happen. What do you think was the secret to you actually kicking drugs so long ago and not going back? I, because I, I, you know, I came into the 12-step program and I gave up control. You know, I didn't, you know, they, they say, and, you know, 12-step programs, they say half measures avail us nothing, which seems unfair because half measures should avail us half, right? right? But they, if you don't do the, if you don't completely commit to it, it, uh, if you commit 100%, it's guaranteed to work. And I committed 100%. I said, you know, whatever I need to do to get sober, I'm going to do. And I was so done with being, I didn't like it. You know, for 14 years, I've been trying to quit. So I started, uh, I started doing, you know, shooting heroin when I was 15 years old. And... Um, I, uh, and I, but I always was trying to quit. It was, I was always doing it without my own permission. You know, I was always doing it, uh, um, you know, again, I was, I knew I was living against conscience. I knew that this is not what I wanted to do with my life. And I, the weird thing is I had iron willpower in every other area of my life. Like I gave up candy for Lent when I was 14 and I never ate candy again until I was in college. I gave up desserts about the same time. And I never ate a dessert again until I was a freshman in college. I was playing sports and I was playing rugby and I, I was trying to bulk up and I started eating desserts again. But I felt like I could do anything with my willpower. But this compulsion was impervious to will. I would tell myself at nine o'clock in the morning, I'm never going to do that again. And at four o'clock in the afternoon, I'd be doing it. And, you know, I, it was the most, to me, the most demoralizing feature of addiction of the disease was my incapacity to keep contract with myself. I, you know, I, um, I was baffled and completely demoralized by it. So when I finally got the opportunity that to be sober, I just said, I, you know, whatever I need to do to make this work, I'm going to do. And I did, that's what I did. And my, my desire for drugs and alcohol was just lifted. And it was like, it was as if I had never been a drug addict. It was, you know, it was a miracle. It was like, it was as big a miracle to me as if I'd been suddenly able to walk on water. Congratulations. Heroin is one of the worst drugs from everyone I've talked to. And that's the hardest one to kick. So congrats on actually kicking it for that long. Yeah, I mean, I'd rather be addicted to heroin than crack cocaine if you if we want to get into the weeds. Okay, okay. fair enough. <laughs>